Hey guys, welcome back to the Vice Casting Couch. Today we're going to install Libreboot on a ThinkPad T480. Now this will be a longer video, so make sure to check the chapters out to skip to whatever portion you need. Uh, for the specifications, this is a modern laptop. It has a 14-inch 1080p screen, has an 8th generation i7, can be upgraded to 64 gigs of RAM, has tons of ports like SD card, HDMI, uh, to USB-A, has USB-C, which you can charge from, and it has a Thunderbolt 3 port that isn't currently working in Libreboot, but it looks like it could be added in the future. You can also upgrade this with a uh, 2242 M.2 drive to have a nice speedy SSD. Uh, there are some other options that come with these, like some have a smart card reader or a fingerprint reader, NFC, stuff like that. I'm not sure if all that's been tested in Libreboot, but make sure to check out the documentation and you can see if it's working there. The documentation also has all the steps I'm gonna be showing in this video. I might have structured it a little bit differently to make sense to me, but if you have any questions, check out the Libreboot website. Now, first thing we're gonna do is go into the BIOS, and we have to do a couple configurations to move on to the next step. We have to disable the Thunderbolt Assist under the configuration settings. Then after that, we're gonna to go to security and disable secure rollback prevention and enable flash BIOS updating for end users. I also disabled the Windows UEFI because I really don't care for Windows. After that, we're also gonna disable secure boot. Now we'll move into the startup portion and change a couple settings there. We're gonna make sure it is set to both UEFI and legacy and then legacy first and make sure CSM support is yes. After that, save changes and reset. Now we're gonna to move to our other computer that'll do the flashing. And I'm just gonna make a temporary directory called T480. And we're gonna CD in there and this is gonna be our working directory. Uh, right there, I just wget the BIOS file that Libreboot recommends us to use. And then we're gonna run git el torito o. And this is our output file. So I'm calling it T480 underscore BIOS underscore update dot image. And then we're pointing it at that ISO we just downloaded. This is going to get the bootable portion of that ISO and allow us to flash it to a USB drive. Once you've done that, plug in your USB drive and run LSBOK to find out what the name of the drive is. And then we're going to type DDIF, which is the input file, and that's that T480 BIOS update image we just made. And then the output file is our USB drive. So in my case, it is slash dev slash SDB. The block size is 4M. And then uh, we got CONV equals FSync and then status equals progress. And this will copy that to the USB drive. From there, we're gonna plug in the charger and our USB drive and make sure to have the charger and the battery in. It is required for this BIOS update. And then we'll just turn on the laptop. Once you turn it on, I just go into the boot menu and choose the USB drive. Uh, if you have your boot priority set up right, you might not have to do this. But in our case, once we select it, we'll go into the Lenovo BIOS update utility. In our case, we're actually downgrading from the latest version of the BIOS to the specific one Libreboot recommends. You're going to get a bunch of warning and information saying, hey, plug in your AC adapter, make sure your battery is charged. Don't turn the system off during the update process. And so just click enter and yes, through all that, if you made sure all that is good to go and do not turn it off while this thing is running, you could break your laptop. And because we don't have a backup at this moment, it could be a little tricky to get it fixed. So it will reset into the BIOS update utility. I couldn't get the uh, capture card to work. So I think it only displays to the internal display on the laptop. Um, this does take a few minutes, but it is pretty quick. We're just gonna let this do its thing and then it'll reboot again and you'll know you're good to go when you can get back into the BIOS and verify that it's done correctly. So now it's rebooting, we're going into the BIOS and we're just gonna make sure the UEF BIOS version is 1.52. We should be good to go now. Now I'm using a fresh install of Linux Mint, so we're gonna have to install Git. We'll just run sudo app install Git, click yes. This will install it for us. And then we'll have to configure Git. So we're gonna run git config dash dash global user dot name uh, quotes John Doe. And then we're going to run the same thing, but user.email. It's going to be John Doe at example.com. This is what Libreboot recommends because I guess some of the build process requires Git to be configured. From here, we're going to Git clone the Libreboot repository. So https colon slash slash codeberg.org slash Libreboot slash lbmk. 
This will clone the Libre Root repository into an LBMK folder, and then we're going to CD into that by typing CD LBMK. From here, I'm going to type export XBMK underscore threads equals four. This is telling it that we have four threads and it should help speed up the build process. Now we're going to type dot slash MK dependencies mint. This is going to install all the dependencies for mint. I had to run this as sudo. Um, but if you check the dependencies file that they have, it'll have a bunch of other distributions like Ubuntu, Fedora, and Arch. So just find out which one you have and run that for your distribution. From here, we're going to type dot slash mk dash b flash prog. This is going to build the flash prog utility. This is what we're going to use to actually flash the BIOS chips. And then from here, we're going to go to the Libreboot website and go to the download section. Then we're going to scroll down to the HTTPS mirrors. Um, in my case, I'm just going to use the MIT one, but you can use any one you want. Once it loads, we're going to click stable. And then from stable, we're going to click the version. So in our case, 24.12.06. And then we're going to click ROMs. And then we're going to scroll down until we see Pico Surprog. We're going to find the tar.xz and we're going to copy that link and go into our terminal. I'm just using wget, but you could probably use curl to download this, but we're gonna do wget and then paste that link we have. And this will download the Pico Surprog files for us. From here, we're gonna extract it. So tar-xvf and then the file we just downloaded. And from here, we're gonna extract the file and then get our Pico set up. So once we grab our Raspberry Pi Pico, we're gonna press the boot select button and plug in the USB drive and hold it down this will make it present as a mass storage device to your computer. This will allow us to drag over the firmware required to make this a spy flasher. In my case, it auto mounted, but from here, we're going to go into the folder where we extracted the Pico firmware. So that's going to be our T480, LBMK, and then we're going to go into the bin folder and then into the Surprog Pico folder. Now there's a bunch in here because there's a bunch of different Pico variants. Uh, we just had the standard Pico one. So we're going to find the Surprog Pico file copy that and then paste it into our Raspberry Pi Pico. Once it's pasted, you'll see it automatically disconnects and that means it's doing its thing and flashing itself and getting it set up. To find out what device it is, we're gonna run D message. And in our case, we can see it's now presented and it even has some cool little touches like the manufacturer being libreboot.org. But as we can see, it is TTY ACM zero. We're gonna have to remember that when we start running our flash prog commands. Now that we've done that, we're going to go back to our web browser, back to that downloads page, and we're going to find the T480 release ROM. So in that same ROMs area, we're going to find the T480 version. In our case, we just want the tar.xz file. So we're going to copy that link and we're going to do the same thing as before. We're going to do wget and paste that link in there and this will download it for us. Once we've downloaded it, we're going to run dot slash mk inject and then point it at that libreboot t480 file we just downloaded this is a script that's going to do a couple different things for us it's going to inject all these stuff like fsp uh, me a neuter version of me i should add and also randomize the mac address for us it's also doing another thing which is downloading the thunderbolt bin and we'll need that for later when we go to fix the issue that the thunderbolt has on this model this does take a few minutes so i did speed it up but once it's done, we'll move on to the next step. Now we're gonna go ahead and disassemble our laptop. First thing we're gonna do is remove the battery. And I will say this is a pretty easy laptop to work on. There's only six screws and they appear to be captive because I couldn't get them to come out. Um, but there's a bunch of tabs we gotta pry up against the case. So just kind of work around with a little tool and you can kind of get all these tabs done. After that, we're going to disconnect the batteries. There's the internal battery and also the yellow coin cell battery. We're going to unplug both of those. Now you can see in the top left corner, that is the Thunderbolt chip. We will be flashing that to fix an issue. And in the center, there is the mainboard BIOS chip. Uh, the reason we're flashing the Thunderbolt chip is there were certain bugs in the release versions that would cause the USB-C not to work, cause the fast charging not to work, etc. So we're just going to fix that to make sure we're good to go. I also made a crude drawing of how to wire up the Pico. Uh, you want to make sure it's wired up properly. This shows you what pins on the Pico go to what pins on the chip. And here's a close up of the Thunderbolt chip. 
you'll see that little divot in the corner that indicates pin one. You'll also see the PCB says one, but not every chip has that marked. So knowing that the divot means pin one helps us line up our clip that is wired up to our Pico. So once pin one on the clip and the chip match what's on the Pico, you should be good to go. After that, we're gonna plug in the USB cable and then we're gonna go back to our computer and start flashing. So we're gonna CD into the flashprog folder. So CD elf slash flashprog. And then we're gonna run sudo dot slash flashprog dash p surprog colon dev equals slash dev slash tty acm zero, which is what we found earlier. And then we're gonna do dash r for read. And I'm just gonna to path to where our t480 directory is and call it t480tb1.bin. This is gonna get a read of our chip now we're gonna do it a second time, this time call it tb2.bin, and we're gonna compare them using the SHA-512 sum command. And if you do the path to the file, but name it tbstar.bin, it'll read the hash of both files, and then we can compare them and make sure they're exactly the same. This helps ensure that we have a good read of our chip and make sure the clip is hooked up properly. Now we're gonna do the same flashprog command, but this time dash E, and this will erase the chip. And then now we're gonna make a zeroed out null.bin file. So we're gonna do dd if equals slash dev slash zero, of equals null.bin, our bs or block size equals one m, and then the count equals one. Now that we have a zeroed out null.bin file, we're gonna write that to the Thunderbolt chip. So we'll do our same flash prog command, but this time dash w and then null.bin. Now the writing portion of Flashprog does take a little bit longer than the reading portion, but it is still pretty quick. I did speed up the video to make sure it isn't too long, but as you can see, it'll go through and write the file and you'll know it's done when it says verifying flash verified. Once that's done, we can go back to our Pico and first we're gonna remove the USB cable from it. This will cut any power from the Pico and then we can safely remove the clip from our Thunderbolt chip. We're gonna plug back in the coin cell battery and the internal battery and kind of loosely put back together the T480 by putting the back plate on. I didn't put any of the screws back in because we're gonna have to get back into this, but we will have to connect the battery first and then we have to connect the charger. Once you do that, it should automatically power on. This does take a few minutes because there's some stuff going on behind the scenes, but once you can get back into the Lenovo UEFI BIOS, you can turn it back off and then get back into the laptop. So we're gonna have to pry off some of those clips again. That's why I said loosely, don't push down too much if you can help it. But once you pry those clips back off, we can get back to our Thunderbolt chip and finish up. Once we remove the back plate, we can disconnect the internal battery and the coin cell battery, and then reattach our Pico to the Thunderbolt chip, then plug in the USB cable. Uh, this time we're gonna write another file and we're gonna path to it in the vendor files. So in the root of the LBMK folder, we're gonna go vendor files slash t480 slash tb.bin. It will then go ahead and flash the Thunderbolt chip with the fixed Thunderbolt firmware. Once we're done with that, we can disconnect the Pico, remove the clip from the Thunderbolt chip, and then connect the batteries back up. Then we'll loosely attach the back plate and hook up the external battery and then plug in the charger. You'll see it kind of boots up and resets a couple times, but once you can get into the Lenovo stock BIOS, you should be good to go and we can turn the system off and actually start flashing Libreboot. So now that we fixed all the Thunderbolt problems, we're gonna disconnect the battery, pull the back plate back off. Once inside, we can disconnect the internal battery and also the coin cell battery. Here's a close up of the BIOS chip. You can see that little divot in the corner that indicates pin one. This time the PCB doesn't have one mark, so it's important we know that divot is pin one so we can connect up our chip to the clip properly. Once we hooked up the clip to the Pico, I'm just putting something underneath the Pico to make sure it doesn't short out on the motherboard, but then we'll connect the USB cable. In here, we're gonna CD to the LBMK folder, extract the Libreboot uh, T480 tar file, and then go back into the flashprog directory by doing cd elf slash flashprog and then we'll do the flashprog command dash r t480 bios 1.rom and we're just going to do two reads again to ensure that our clip is connected properly and we have a good backup of our stock bios that way if we ever had to revert back to the stock bios say we're going to sell a laptop or something we can always revert back 
So once we do two reads, we're going to compare them using the SHA-512 sum command, just like we did with the Thunderbolt. And this time we can do star, make sure that both the hashes are correct, and then we can move on to flashing Libre Boot. So we're going to do dash W on our flash prod command and path to the bin folder into the T480 folder and choose which one you want. I'm choosing the Seagra payload with the core boot graphics and the US QWERTY keyboard. This will take a little bit of time to write. This is bigger than the Thunderbolt chip, but it is still pretty quick, maybe a couple minutes. Once it's done flashing, go say verified, and then we can disconnect the USB cable from the Pico, remove the clip from the motherboard, connect up our batteries again, and then put the back plate back on. As you can see, I didn't screw down any of the screws. I just wanted to test it first, make sure we're good to go. Here we're gonna open up our laptop and turn it on. It will take a little bit longer to boot the first time after flashing as it has to do some RAM training and other stuff in the background. But on subsequent boots, it should be a lot faster. After it resets and boots up again, You'll start to see in the top left corner, it'll say CBIOS and then say Libreboot Revision 8. This is the CBIOS payload, and then it will boot into the Grub payload. Um, that's why it's called CGrub, because it has both. Here we can see we had the Libreboot Grub interface. Um, after this, I'm going to do a couple of upgrades. That's why I didn't fully screw it back together, and also to make sure it worked. I'm just going to power off the laptop and go back into it. So like I said, this thing can support up to 64 gigs of RAM. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the one stick it came with, and I have this Kingston Fury 64 gig kit, and we're gonna put it in place. This is DDR4, so it's pretty easy to put in. We just kinda slot it in and then push down. Uh, while I'm in here, I'm also gonna go ahead and upgrade the Wi-Fi card. It just has a stock AC Wi-Fi card, so I'm gonna put an AX Wi-Fi card in there. It'll make it a lot faster. Here I have an AX210. And it's pretty easy, you just kind of put it in there and then screw it back down. But be kind of careful with these Wi-Fi connectors if you are doing this. You just kind of line it up and then push down, but don't force it. If it doesn't feel right, don't do it. Now we can go ahead and finally button up our laptop once and for all. Uh, we'll just put the screws back in, tighten those down, and then we can reconnect the external battery. And we have a fully kitted out, Libre booted T480 laptop. Hey, if you guys made it to the end of the video, thank you so much for watching. This was a kind of a long one. Um, I kind of hate making videos this long, but I try to make it sure it's as information packed as possible. I put all the commands I ran down in the description. Also, if you like the video and like our content, please consider subscribing, give us a thumbs up, and leave any comments you have down below. It really means a lot and helps the channel grow.